Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Ushanka Show – Stories about life in the Soviet Union. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи! В эфире программа Ушанка Show. And as you may guess already, today we're gonna talk about toys in the Soviet Union. Игрушки в Советском Союзе. Over the years people requested video on the topic of Soviet toys, so today we're gonna talk about most popular toys in the Soviet Union as well the toys that I used to own or I remember. By the way, I already made a video on the topic of hobbies in the Soviet Union when I talked about collecting die-cast car models, matchbox cars they call them sometimes in the United States or United Kingdom, and the link will be in the comment section below. Okay, and let's begin with the quick lesson of Russian, Ukrainian and this time Belarusian languages. In Russian language a toy is игрушка. Игрушка. In Ukrainian language, a toy is игрушка. Игрушка. So very close to игрушка and игрушка. And the reason I needed to mention Belarusian language this time because the Belarusian word for a toy is цацка. Цацка. And it's really funny because in Russian language цацка usually means something like really useless. I don't know, there's some item you have and you're messing around with it, say like, why you tzatskaishse with this thing? So tzatska, it's kind of like really silly word in Russian language while it's a legit word in Belarusian language. One time back in the early 90s, uh, me and my friend traveled from northern Ukraine to Gomel, which is in Belarus, to visit our friend and do some shopping. And when we walked in town, we saw a store called tzatski, it means toys, and we thought it was so hilarious because it's just, it's such a silly word in Russian language, but it's a legit word in Belarusian. Tsotsky. The toys. So Soviet toys. Uh, recently I got this comment on my community page and it says, I had a soft trans after steel toy truck my dad bought me from Bulgaria when I was a kid. And soft trans after there was a, a Soviet era trucking company that perform all the long distance trucking within the USSR as well as abroad. So they threw it away months ago because it was a hazard for the kids. Tells you a lot about today's toys and kids. Quite possible the person was talking about this toy truck. As you see it says soft trans after on its trailer and definitely it does look dangerous. And the reason why so many Soviet toys look so basic, ugly, primitive made is because of central planning. Quite often factories that produce ammo cases were required to dedicate 10% of their production to toys or other consumer goods. So they will just do just the basic easiest thing to produce on the same equipment as they produce ammo cases or whatever, some kind of toys. And as a result, we got this really ugly, scary looking toys. And of course, besides metal, a lot of Soviet toys were made of wood. As you see at this picture, there's this Comrade Sergei, probably back in 1973 or 74, practicing some math in the kindergarten. So we had a photographer that came to take pictures of kids. And I'm not sure if it was his uh, props for pictures or that was they belong to the kindergarten. And we actually had this joke back in the day. How would you describe your Soviet childhood? Well, let's see. I had cast iron, crib, slippery window cell, and wooden toys. That's my Soviet childhood in a nutshell. There is another example of the Soviet metal toy. Same photo session from 1973-74. I never owned this tractor, but I would love to own it now. It would look good on my bookshelf here in the office. And now I want to show you my favorite toy of all time. You may recognize this photo. I show it quite often. Uh, so this picture was taken in 1982 in the northern Ukraine during my summer break. And I'm here with my friend Dima on the left and I'm posing with my favorite rifle that I purchased the same year. So here we are 11 year olds in the village and behind us is my grandparents log cabin. This is what always makes my wife chuckle because she see my high water pants and I'm tucked in and pants pulled so high but we didn't care and of course I'm also barefoot that's another memories of my Soviet childhood in the village if it's warm weather we were always barefoot outside and you see there's a closer again I'm holding that uh, rifle that looks like Winchester isn't it? And when I searched online I actually found this toy it's obviously look as a Winchester. We call it pneumatic rifle, but of course there's nothing pneumatic. You just pull the trigger and that little speaker in the back makes the shooting sound pretty decent loud one. So that's why I love that um, gun so much. 
Mine was green though, this is a blue one. And check this out, I found my diary entry from June 5, 1982, where I mentioned in that I purchased this Vintovka, I call it rifle, pneumatic rifle for 4 rubles and 50 kopecks at the local store in the village. And I need to remind you, my parents' salary was, my mom was making 130 rubles a month, my dad 180. This plastic rifle was 4 rubles 50 kopecks. It's actually a lot of money. And another picture of me proudly posing with the rifle. Uh, this photo was taken by my cousin Alex, who is Uncle Misha's son. And behind me is my grandparents' barn. It had a straw roof, and that's when they uh, kept the hay for the winter. And it's another story that little uh, corn next to me. One time we were on the way from a mushroom hunting in the forest, and we were crossing the collective farm field where they just um, applied corn uh, seeds, planted, they planted corn. So I grabbed a dozen of those seeds off the ground, and I planted them in our yard and that's my corn growing and of course i had no idea that my rifle was just a blatant copycat of american how the west was one rifle it was the same system safe no caps and no batteries it just looked way more basic without any multi-color application another toy i remember really well from the late 70s early 80s is this little helicopter apparently it was manufactured in leningrad at the toy factory. So they had an actual toy factory in Leningrad. Uh, the price was 2 rubles 50 kopecks and that thing was flying high. I remember we always had problem recovering that little helicopters from the tree branches. And if some of you said, wait a minute, that helicopter looks very familiar, it is because it was also a copy of American toy BW FlexAware. We just removed American Air Force insignia. <laughs> And then, there we go. Here's another photo from my childhood that was probably taken also early 70s. And this was during our visit in Kiev Zoo. So there was a photographer who was making extra money. You know, kids would be posing with this pedal horse we call in Konpedalny. And this tricycle, of course, it didn't belong to me. And it was quite expensive. And of course, there's no way my parents could buy anything that bulky because the apartment we lived in at that time had only one room. And was very tiny. This horse tricycle was manufactured in Ukraine at the factory called Zaporoz Stars. It was literally, it's a steel mill and they were making those bikes and it was very expensive. 21 rubles and 50 kopecks. So picture if you make $1,500 a month just in dollars and you pay $215 for this uh, silly tricycle. And surprise, surprise, our Soviet pedal horse looked exactly like a British pedal horse from 1930s. I also remember this pistol from my childhood. I never owned it, but some lucky kids did in my building. So it looks like from some sci-fi movie, right? The price was once again, five rubles, 50 kopecks, $55 if you make 1500 bucks a month very expensive and when you pull the trigger it was making this whirling sound and the lights were blinking so it cool looks like a sp space gun but this gun didn't come from space it came from japan back in 1973 they were manufacturing super jet ray gun and our gun from the 80s looked exactly the same just way more simplified another toy i remember from my childhood this kaleidoscope tube and i think i had one of those and i just discovered it was actually manufactured at the toy factory right in kiev ukraine and the price was one ruble 45 kopecks 14 dollars if you make 1500 dollars a month and remember this photo i showed you earlier when i began researching this uh, kiev toy factory named after vatutin I discovered they also manufacture this tractor. This tractor definitely looks way better in color and seems like someone really spent time restoring this toy to pristine new condition. They began manufacturing these tractors back in 1964. And as I mentioned, my photo was taken probably around 1973. Fun fact, this toy factory in Kyiv was established in 1944 and they used equipment that they brought from Nazi Germany and they used the same equipment all the way into the 90s when that factory shut down after the collapse of the Soviet Union. There's another cute toy they manufactured in Kyiv. Stankovy Pulimyot. So it's a machine gun, which I think it's called Maxim, right? So yeah, we had a lot of toys 
that were rifles, guns, and pistols. And even machine guns. But I believe that for many people that grew up in the Soviet Union, this doll, Kukla Nivalashka, doll that never falls, kind of like a most prolific, I think that's the correct word, uh, toy in the Soviet Union because it was everywhere. It was manufactured in such a large amounts that any toy department had it, while other toys could be in short supply, could be deficit. Kukla Nivalashka. Not surprisingly, this doll was inspired by a Japanese doll from 1930s, Roly Poly. I just learned that. And over the years, design changed, they became cuter. Well, Japanese toy was also becoming cuter over the years, and Soviet toy was following the trend. So on the right, you got Okiagari Kobosi, Kuramochen Company, 1950s, and on the left, uh, Soviet Nivalashka. But this is the kicker. It was manufactured at Tambovsky Parahavoy Zavod. So that's a factory located in Tambov, Russia. And it's a gun powder factory manufacturing those cute dolls. Yes, you heard me correct. This doll was manufactured at the gun powder factory. Apparently they had some leftover material after manufacturing powder. And they realized, hey, we can use this cellulose to make these toys, especially because government required us to make 10% of our production consumer-oriented. So they were manufacturing gunpowder and these cute dolls. So if you're hearing a Soviet kid saying that playing with this doll was a real blast, he really meant it. And that was the problem or just the situation in the Soviet toy manufacturing that random factories, they were manufacturing ammo, gunpowder, tanks, whatever, were required to have something produced for consumers. Maybe toys, maybe some kitchen utensils, and a lot of these items were really basic and really ugly. Of course, now they became hot collector's items for that specific reason. And of course, because the engineers that design ammo cartridges don't really know how to design toys, the best way to do it was just to copy something from the West. Unfortunately, I don't have any toys in my collection that left from my childhood. When we were moving back in 1981, my mom told me I don't need toys anymore because I'm a big boy, so I carry the box with all my toys out to the playground and I give them away. My dad actually was very upset about it for a long time because some of those toys were expensive uh, presents from his co-workers. But some of my subscribers have Soviet-era toys in their collections and I would like to thank Nick uh, for his pictures and short videos of his Soviet-era robot. And now let's take a look at some other Soviet era toys that were inspired by toys from the West. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this video about Sovietsky Igrushki, Soviet toys. As always, please don't forget to like this video, share with your friends, and we'll talk to you soon. До свидания, goodbye.